Uh, I'd like to, uh, this is a Board of Finance special meeting uh, of May 20th, uh, 2019. I don't have um, Chris, are you, how are you what, What's going to happen, uh, I guess I will also call the joint meeting of the Board of Selectmen and Board of Finance to order. Uh, I believe we have Samantha Nestor and Stefan Grossinger on the phone. Correct? Okay. So with that said, I guess we can call the meeting to the order. Steve, you want to designate or lead us in a pledge? <laughs> so uh, I might as well just jump jump in quickly because this is going to be a little bit uh, convoluted because we're going to have a joint board of finance board of select meeting for the first item. Um, then I'm going to have to go with my board of selectmen to do an interview and a candidate hire uh, in the other room. And I'm going to come back to address, uh, I guess it's item two, but you can actually probably make that item three and have the, the board of ed uh, speak while I'm doing the interview just so that nobody's sitting around doing nothing. And then I'll come back. But I won't be here. Oh, you won't. So I'll, I'll probably be 15 minutes over there, but you can do it still. We already voted on that. Um, so this first item comes about because as we discussed during the regular budget season, um, although in the la last year we went from uh, 460 to 500 for, for road paving budget, which was about a 8.7% increase. This year we went from 500 to 550, which was a 10% uh, increase in paving. That's together about an 18.5%. Alan can do his math thing, but it, it doesn't really matter. We, we, we did increase the investment significantly, but it's not even close to enough. Our roads are probably in the worst shape. I've been here 15 years. It's the worst shape I've seen. But there's all sorts of theories about what's going on, whether it's the more aggressive magic salt that we shifted to, the liquid salt, uh, more aggressive freeze thaw uh, cycles with more variability in the weather, or with changes in, in more sort of environmentally friendly asphalt product that might not have some of the, the uh, more environmentally pernicious uh, bonding agents or whatever it might cause. Whatever's going on, it's, it's, it's clear, it's apparent that the roads are a problem. Last, last year I came to your board and said, hey, maybe we want to think about moving uh, road paving from the operations to the capital budget at that point in time, we all decided it sort of wouldn't be a good idea. That said, we do have three, sort of a three-prong, and I'm going to let Lou jump in in a second, uh, approach to, to, to sort of remediating this problem. One's a short, one's a medium, and one's a long-term. Short-term, we did luckily, uh, with the state budget, end up better than we thought. We have an extra 260-something thousand. 372. Right. Right. So that's that's together ECS, which we did not budget because we thought there was a reasonable chance it didn't come, and something called the municipal municipal stabilization grant. Both of those are uh, line items we are actually know we're getting this year. So we thought it would be a reasonable thing to do at this point to redeploy that money instead of having it build up in in, in, in reserve to probably our most pressing need. I'll also say, you know, not just objectively the roads are a problem, and, and, and Lou has noticed it, and anybody who comes into town. We did a survey, and one of the top problems in town, obviously taxes are always a challenge, but one of the top complaints people had about sort of our infrastructure and services were, were the road conditions. So, so we know that the town has concerns about that. I can tell you that the number one form of, of complaint email I get is about the roads. Um, and while we did handle sort of the top problem roads in the budget with the 550 we already asked for, if we can extend that further, and, and Lou will go into to the ways we're extending it to, to sort of bring us to a better baseline. That's, that's phase one. Phase two, we are looking at doing a study. We did a, uh, an extensive set of interviews, and, and thank you, Mr. Farr, uh, for helping us out with that. Um, we had three companies that had uh, 
somewhat similar solutions, but we, there's one that we're leaning towards. We think they will help us after we do that study, and it's between 20 and 30,000, and we're, that, that's factored into the, to the money we're asking for. Um, they're going to basically do a full uh, assessment of every road in town. They're going to give us then recommendations about what their recommended treatment is. For example, there's something called crack sealing that we've never done in 40 years, which is just sealing the cracks while they exist so you don't get water in, it then freezes and cleaves the, 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 uh, the pavement out. They're going to recommend, you know, there's micro paving, there's uh, full mill work, there's recycling, and, and, and Luke can go into all those details. That's sort of the medium term. And then the longer term is going to be, uh, the result of that survey is going to tell us what we need to do to get to a real baseline where we're not playing catch up or dealing with the potholes and problems. So th there's going to be a number which is going to be higher than 550, I can tell you that for sure. You know, I, I, we're thinking it might be somewhere between eight and nine, knock on wood <laughs> if we're lucky. But we're, right now it looks like, and, and Luke can go into details, we're probably investing about half of what we should have been doing, especially a couple of years ago, we were probably putting half of what we needed in to, into the roads to get to where we need. So that said, I'm going to turn it over to Lou quickly. Can I ask a question? What did Wilton do? Did he just bond to do all the roads in three years, or is that Wilton did the bond? Yeah. Did he just bond to do the roads? I don't know if they bond, bonded to do all of them in three years, but they did bond to do it. So, uh, you know, it, some towns bond, some towns don't. We traditionally don't. After the study, we may not have to. We may be able to set it at a, a level or increment up by 50, 100,000 a year to get to that new baseline without having to bond. That would be, you know, our dream. But the one of the nice things about the studies that they're engineering firms who do this all day with all these different, they'll say, hey, look, you're not going to get out of this unless you bond. So we will have some objective recommendation about at least their opinion from an engineering standpoint and a road funding allocation perspective about what is the best practices and what they would recommend we do. We were looking at some data provided by these firms we interviewed and they're projecting like 14 years or something. So it could be less than that, maybe it has to be installed, I don't know. Um, but yeah, you could though even at 13 years bond. The problem is though, I think it's we have to sit down, we have to do an inventory of all our roads. We we do we do that, we need an objective inventory as well, and we need to rate them. And then the first thing we actually need to do as part of that process is determine of the roads that are newer and in good condition, what do we have to do to maintain those so that they last 13 to 18 years? Because in the past, we pay a road and we wouldn't touch it until it was time to repay it again. So that's, we have to talk about crack sealing. Uh, well, it's it's like crack sealing the same as uh, tar and stuff? Lou will go into ex exhaustive detail with any of the different. I'll try to. Sorry, <laughs> but, but that said, and again, I'm not sure of this. But I believe that once you bond, at least for construction, and I'm not sure if roads are different, you have to spend that within a certain period of time. So we would have to basically front load all the roads at the same time, which is doable, but that means the whole town would be paved basically at the same time. So probably if we were to bond. Five, we could do five year tranches, right? We can, we can just break it out. Again, we don't know if we have to go there, but I don't think we're going to be able to objectively figure that out unless we do this study. So I did talk to them, all three of the companies that came and interviewed and said, you know, what's the ROI? And they're all like, one road, you're going to get that back. So basically, you know, for the 20 to 30 we're going to spend, it, it's, it's easily, a, but that's built into this ask. But now I'll let Lou go into details about what roads we're talking about and what this study it will be after we spend this money? Yes. Yeah. Now that's a good point. So you don't have to just take my word for it, but the roads that are identified on here are objectively, subjectively, and in every other way a complete disaster. Right. I would be okay with the roads. But there is the issue of should we wait to do this till we till we get the study that says we need to do it? These roads are unquestionably codfish. Uh, 12 o'clock, school roads, you know, anybody who's driven on it understands what it is. Steep Hill, Cannondale, Old Hill, Old, Old Mill. Um, we'll get into that. We'll, we'll get into that. But those are all in really seriously rough shape. I'll, I'll testify to Carnage 12 o'clock and Steep Hill 
The next scenario increases a little bit with the funding of the municipal state circulation grant in addition to the approved budget. Uh, so uh, Cannondale and Old Mill will stay the same on those scenarios, but that's uh, uh, the, uh, the total um, distance of the roadway. Uh, the increase on this scenario is doing all of codfish, including high noon. So that goes from Old Reading to 11 o'clock. Uh, high noon and codfish are, are uh, contiguous, and it's, they're both in bad shape. Obviously, codfish is a little bit uh, in worse shape. So this scenario basically covers all of uh, codfish and high noon as compared to the previous scenario. That bumps up the total miles to 2.95 miles. Um, the next scenario is, uh, is the approved budget with the addition of the education, education cost share grant of $263,889. Uh, that is basically the same for the three scenarios. Steep hill would be increased to about 8 tenths of a mile. Uh, we'll go from uh, Old High to Sunset, uh, which is arbitrary because from Sunset to Davis Hill is equally bad. So uh, like a barber, you have to stop sometime. Uh, so that's where we would stop. And then the school road would remain the same. The last and final scenario, which is uh, it's actually it's $368 less than that. There was an Excel spreadsheet around that, but the, uh, it comes out to $872,726, which, which is the addition um, of the monies that are being asked tonight to approve. That includes uh, the education share, uh, cost share grant, the municipal stabilization grant, less the uh, the uh, unanticipated decreases in some of the other grants that we had, which comes out to a total of, like I said, eight hundred and seventy-two thousand dollars and seven hundred twenty-six cents, uh, twenty-six dollars, which is the three hundred twenty-six, two three hundred twenty-two dollars, seven hundred twenty-six dollars, uh, in addition to the five hundred fifty that was approved. The scenario to pave the roads in this category is all of Cannondale, all of Old Mill, Codfish including high noon, uh, an additional uh, six tenths of a mile on steep hill, which we're getting there. I think old high uh, steep hill is about two miles, so we're getting closer and closer. And then the uh, school road will stay the same at the 0.62 miles. This really boosts our mileage up to 3.94 miles uh, total roads that we're going to cover, which is still below what we need, but um, again, like I said before, the approval of this, this is a this will prove to be a seminal moment in the town of uh, Weston, and, and it will prove that their infrastructure uh, will be addressed appropriately. Luke, quick question. You have a contingency of 10% in that final proposal. Is that $76,000, uh, let's say, $77,000? That's correct. If you don't spend the $77,000, what will you do? Will you just let it remain in your budget, or will you go back and do some more? That's a great question. <laughs> we did rehearse it, but that's a great question. I've had it in, my, in the back of my mind, and uh, Chris spoke about it briefly. I would love to uh, initiate a crack ceiling program. So I, I had proposals on, on my desk for about $20,000, and the crack ceiling, let me just expand on that a little bit, crack ceiling uh, treatment program, uh, it, it, it uh, extends the integrity of the roadway. Five or five, six years or something like that before you have to do a uh, mill and pave or some other type of a, a payment process. Uh, the crack ceiling would be performed on roads that are in fair to good condition. Not the road, it's, it's, you can't do it on a poor road because the cracks are too wide, the, uh, the subsurface has been affected uh, adversely. So the, the theory behind the crack ceiling is to do a good road and to just uh, extend the life of it before it becomes a so that's a great program to have. Um, you know, that, and it's a really a luxury, uh, but that's up to the day. We could do, do cracks in we could throw some more asphalt into Steep Hill, for example. Or How much do you need to finish Steep Hill if you, besides that 1.4 here, how much do you need? Another 0.6? Another 0.6 miles would take us to about $120,000. Another 120. Right. Which we don't have here. Okay. Right. Well, yep. I mean, that could be part of a non-profit. What you're saying here, 
You're saying that the crack ceiling is extending the life of the good roads. Yes. So the return on the investment. I don't know how much that cost per mile might be better, right? No, absolutely for a good road. Yeah, that's what I mean. You're, no, but I mean in terms of de deferring repayment good road, right? Right, exactly. Extend it like five years. Yeah. Right. So Makes sense yeah. to me. Also, it does when you're taking money away from the bad roads. So that's so a philosophical right. decision. I don't think any of these roads were on, it was a schedule we got in the original budget. They, they were all on No, these, these were all on it for this year. There was, there was an original request that was made that was like $2 million. Right. <laughs> now, and that included the one circular road. Mary, Mary, don't Mary go ahead. So what I want to point out, though, is just look at the year's tape of these roads that are probably the, the, in the worst shape in town. Steep Hill was done in 2010, right? Uh, School Road, 2006. Old Mill, 2004. So the 20 years is, is a nice hope, but... Steep Hill gets we're not, a lot of traffic. Yeah. Yes. Lot of the Right, so we're going to, that's why we need to support. Right, exactly. One of the other things just want to mention is we have notified the contractor that's going to come on and do this paper this summer that we are going to have the materials that they're using independently tested so we can hold them accountable to make sure that the materials are what they say we're supposed to get. We're going to be taking core samples and we're going to, uh, in order to make sure that they're compacting as much as they should. So we're going to be doing this. Mm -hmm. That's going to come out of the work industry. And we're, we're letting them know in advance. So heads up, we're going to be doing all kinds of testing from an independent laboratory. I have one more question. Is it possible that quality or the poor quality of school road is keeping traffic slower? <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, always, I always joke bottles are a great uh, speaker to all of them. Exactly. I mean, you know, on all the other roads, I understand why you would want them to be nice, but I know there are a lot of people driving at School Road, but I'd be willing to bet all these roads that get repaved are going to hear much more stealing complaints. Now, I, I agree with you. My only concern is that there are kids jogging and biking and stuff on there, too. So there's speed bumps, there's police, there's lots of crowd. You're right. Now, that, that's an argument for, for, uh, for Old Mill Road. <laughs> so I think they would prefer we don't touch it because they love the fact that you're having to slow down. But I have had co calls from people whose rims were, were bent just from that road, multiple yeah. people. Old Mill has taken the lead. Old, Old Mill, it, it's an incredible thing to drive on. It, it really is. Mm -hmm. um, that said, we did talk to all three contractors and we said if we were to go forward with the, this sort of short, medium, long term plan, we would not want them to assess these roads till after they're done, obviously. <laughs> so, just stupid little point, but I'm throwing that out there in case anybody's thinking about it. We would have them assess it after we did this for those particular roads, just because we know we're doing them. Or we're doing part of them, we'll see right now after this vote, um, whether we're going to do this the whole thing. Because once you've paid the road, the PCI index on it should go to 100. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, but they still have to factor that in the report. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So I mean, it's just a matter of what they said. They stamp everything that they say. Yeah. Yeah. No, I'm, they don't necessarily have to go reassess it. I just didn't want it in the modeling because then they'd have to pull it out. I just believe it out. Just give it a hundred. Yeah. Although, is it ever a hundred? Are new ones a hundred? Well, we'll find out. We'll find out. Is there? Say, look, we only have 800,000. What would you recommend we do? Or you could say, based on road conditions, what would you suggest we do and what should the budget be? And with all these things, they give, well, two out of the three of them, and probably we're choosing one of those top two, 
uh, they have programs where you can actually play with all the, the, the uh, inputs. Some of them use all these different algorithms, but you can change sort of the assumptions in there. But they will give us recommendations about whether they think we should be crack sealing or chip sealing or micro paving or doing a full mill and repave or whatever. <laughs> Why can't we do that analysis on our own? What yeah. are we? Why well, don't we need a third party to? Well, we could. They drive all the roads. Well, they we, use. We could. Yeah. I mean, back to my point. We they, could rate the roads. We could rate them. We could rate them. Now, whether or not they're going to rate them better because what they do all year will pause for many years, I'd say they more, more rate more them. Well, uh, they also do it every 10 feet using this. It's, well, they use AI algorithms and, and photographs every 10 feet where some of them are doing 3D scans, uh, 3D uh, cameras on the road. Some others are, are using just top level scans. They feed all the data from literally every 10 feet into these algorithms. When you're doing it by hand, what happens is you generally rate the road as a whole as opposed to segment by segment. So you're, not, you're, you're getting an al uh, uh, amalgamated sort of score that's not going to be as granular and not going to... Now we could do it, but now, staff is an issue too. Just to add to that too though, um, we, we interviewed three companies yesterday. The company that we like, um, they said, look, you know, we can train you and train your people how to you know, rate a road. And you could then use our software, which is really the, the, diff the thing that we don't have, to enter in all your inputs and your ratings and update them, update the price of the various different um, technologies, whether it's you know, chip seal or full re you know, re resurfacing. And then you can just, if you put in all the new updates year after year after year, you know, the cost is going to be a lot less and with the computer systems that we don't have. And that will allow for short term and long term planning. And what does that cost? Um, it ranges from the different companies. Um, it's a few thousand dollars a year, it looks like, to maintain it. Okay. It depends. Like one of them was 5750 a year, a couple of others were 2000 The cost of them to rate the whole thing? Uh, the cost ranges from about $30,000, all bells and whistles included, to twenty dollars based on the three companies. So 12000 is what it's cost to do the, what's called, what was it called? Roadbot. Bo Road Don't we need to do this every year? No, every three years, maybe. Okay. But, but they're telling us that after the first three years, the next one they were saying would only be 10,000 because they'd already have our, all of our database set up and all the data. So the, on a recurring basis, the, drop, the, the price drops down significantly. And like they said, we could train the staff to do the rating. It might still be a good idea to have, you know, the empirical robotic AI driven thing to actually assess the specific roads. Unless we get this all up to shape and everybody's comfortable and we're like, hey, the roads are consistent, we're looking great. We're doing crack sealing, they're lasting. I'm being optimistic, <laughs> but so you know we, we did consider that. But at this point, we just wanted to get to a point where we have a baseline to, to build off of, and then we can make decisions about where to scale back going from there. We're, we're in a situation now where roads are in a desperate condition, and I think uh, third party professional consulting engineer uh, basically died. Can mm -hmm. I do it? Yes, I can do it. Um, I've done it in the past. I've never had an engineer do this for me. Where I uh, where I previously worked, so this would be. Uh, what were your roads in this difficult of the situation? No. And you, what was your budget like? That's why it's easy. <laughs> it was easy for me to do, but you know I had personnel. You know we're short on personnel, we're short on budget. You know you need two or three people to do that. That's half my staff, basically. Well, you you can correct me if I'm wrong, but this is the first time I can remember uh, that Public Works has come to us and asked us for more money. We've always just been told, I came up with the number of a state, quarter of a million dollars a year. What was the ongoing? Depends on the price was, of asphalt. But yeah, 400, but, I think it was. Yeah, but it was always just like every year, it was like set aside X hundreds of thousands of dollars. There was never a conversation about, well, that's not enough. There was. There, 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 I look back and I talked to Tom Andrew about this. Um, he told me that there were a few years where we received more tar or illicit money and they did spend more on paving those years. Yeah, and that's so no funny. Yeah. I mean, well, up until 2014, excuse me, I, I think that you had to use tar and illicit money for the roads, had to go trade for the roads. And in 2014, it changed, so maybe that coincides with your memory. I, I think the overall point there is where is the best use of the money? Okay, so we can constantly be playing catch up to repair roads that are, you know, that really need major overall, and just keep coming back to the well every five or six years to repay them, like we're saying in Steve Hill. Whereas if we spend the money strategically and fix the 
under you know, the underlying structure in, in places where it needs to be fixed and the drainage and whatever has to be. We'll get to a point where we'll essentially have a, uh, a stable road infrastructure that from that point forward is just the budget will be for ongoing maintenance as opposed to you know reconstruction and and, and so forth that we're seeing now. Well, we, I, I would really like to end part on everyone here, uh, the return on investment. So if, if we keep defining the roads, uh, what would cost $200,000 a mile, which is your conventional mill pay, would probably cost $400,000 a mile to, uh, to claim the road and dig it all out, put your base down and put drainage in there and put the road in there, similar to what Michael's way was uh, last year or year before. So instead yeah. of bringing the mill pay there, yeah. uh, you know, they had to reclaim the whole road. Yeah. So is kind of foolish. The, the further we get uh, deferred, the, the further we defer the roads, that gap is going to grow bigger and bigger, and there's going to be more roads. And I wouldn't be shocked if uh, the, uh, the evaluation uh, or the road assessment would tell us that there's more roads that should be reclaimed and reconstructed than we think about it. So, Are there? No. So, no. so, structurally, you know, really the question here is, you know, do we leave it at the 550? Do we throw in the, the ECS? Do we throw in the ECS plus municipal stabilization? Or do we do uh, just the municipal stabilization? Before, just one question. Is there any uh, downsides coming from the state budget? The detention cost sharing thing off the table? They, they had uh, actually, there was a lot of pushback from municipalities and uh, the legislators listing that they are not going to do mid year changes, it was my understanding. So you think we're done? For this year, for the biennial, I believe. Okay, so this yeah. money, this I mean, money. That, that's what, look, you never know, but, but that, that was a commitment, at least they were, they were making to us, that they wouldn't be going back in the middle of budget seasons and doing this to people. Uh, that said, I'm not going to say that they're not going to come back in two years with, yeah, with tension no, again. Exactly. We all expect we this. Only with this it's, it's a permanent discussion. No, I think getting, getting to the point of this, this item, uh, I think that without going back into the other, three scenarios, it only makes sense to put as much in as we're able to do now, which means the full 322 to 726, and uh, improve the roads as much as we can mm -hmm. while we have this. We may be doing this incrementally over the next few years, and, uh, but now, let, let's do as much as now, we can. Now, procedurally, I just want to take it, because I know it's important to you, the Board of Selectmen have to Make a recommendation, okay, so, and then. But we just but, talk, no, no. I just, oh. just in terms of, I, I, I want to stick to procedure. So I'm in agreement with you. Uh, I just want to jump in to, to oh, hear. The, the board of selectmen, they, they're supposed to do this, and then we're okay. That's that's what we're doing. That's why who oh, joined me? Oh, okay. So why don't you carry on? I have an overarching question. Why is this a special appropriation if we've already got technically having money in house? It's a supplemental. Supplemental, because we have supplemental. to. It hasn't been approved to be applied to this budget. Or, otherwise, it rolls into general fund. Okay. So we're not really, it's not just we're, we're not spending, prices. we're spending money we didn't think we had, so it's going to be basically completely uh, neutral towards the budget we already passed, except that we get more load out of it. That's You've got to take an action on the increase to spend. So Samantha and Steph, are you there? Uh, do you have a preference whether to go ahead with the full amount or some incremental level? Uh, I, I can do it now. Okay, the, for clarification, uh, Board of Selectmen members, the, up, the most up to date amount is 322726 for option four. 322726. Okay. Uh, okay, I have Okay. Okay, so can I have a motion to authorize a fiscal year 2019-20 supplemental appropriation in the amount of $322,726 additional for road paving work uh, transferred into account number, do we have to create this account or does it already exist? Uh, into account number 0130300 59 
422. Can I have a motion to that effect? Can I have a second? Any discussion? Just thank you, Lou. Thank you, Jonathan. Thank you, Jeff. <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, BOS is voting. Uh, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carries unanimously. Okay, so where do we follow on to that? Okay, well, can I have a motion to adjourn and then you can? <laughs> oh, no, we're not. We're, we're going over. We'll be back. So feel free to go ahead with anything I'm else. Sorry, so this, this third, you're coming back for number two? I'm coming back from number two in probably about 15 minutes. We're and just going to go in. Why did you say it's tabled? Um, we'll talk about that. Okay. All right. Um.